All right, so this first thing we want to look at <coughs> is somebody said, well, you know, I didn't have physics. I haven't had chemistry in a long time. What's this thing about, you know, atoms and electrons and things like that? Well, <coughs> it's actually very simple. The only thing you have to understand is that you have the Bohr model of the atom, that you have a, a nucleus, and orbiting, the nucleus contains the protons and neutrons. You don't really need to know that. But you have a nucleus, and then you have electrons orbiting the nucleus, right? Okay, okay. So that's, let's draw that. So here's the nucleus, okay? Now, orbiting the nucleus, you have, you have the electrons, right? Right? Let me get a bigger, a better marker here. So, so now, can you see that? Does that come on? The, is that? Does that come on? Is that all right? Let me see. No. Yeah, you'll be able to see it. I mean, that's going to blow up to the size of a computer screen. But anyway, let's just draw this a little better. So you have these, you have these rings, right, around the nucleus, and you have electrons, right? So <clears throat> you have a form of energy that's exciting an electron, some kind of energy, some something, okay, and and it's. The electron is going to go up to here, right? Well, right away, some random form of energy, some random form of excitation, right? Well, what's going to happen automatically? Automatically, what's going to happen? It's going to drop a level. It's going to either drop down there, right? Or it's going to drop down here, right? Yes? So. There's just a basic rule in, in physics. The farther the electron is away from the nucleus, the more energy it has. The closer the electron it is from the nucleus, the, the less energy it has, the more stable it is. Correct? So, so this one's going to absorb energy, the red one. And then this first one is going to give off the same that it absorbed. But it's going to be a fixed amount. It's going to be a packet a packet of energy. Well, they don't say they don't run around saying packets. They say packet is quantum, plural quanta, right? Yes, yes. And these are what, what's another name for those those packets? Those quantum, quantum mechanics, quantum energies. What's another name for those packets? Einstein had a name for them. What did he call them? You know this word. When you take pictures, you call it, you call it what? You call it what? Photography, right? So it sounds like photography. Photon, yeah, a photon, okay? A photon is one of these packets. You've heard of that before, right? You may not have heard of quanta or quantum, right? But you've heard of photon, right? Yeah. Uh, you watch Star Trek Photon Torpedo, kind of cool. But anyway, they can be thought of as a particle or a wave, right? So this, this is, this is more energy than this, right? High energy, lower energy, but specific energy, a specific energy, right? Well, you know what another name for this is? You know what another name for it is? Anybody guess? You know another name for it? Anybody? This is the same class that's going to, in 48 hours, be nervously awaiting their astronomy midterm. Okay, I'm just curious. Okay, I wonder if it's the same class. Okay, it's called light. That's what light is. Okay, I know this is my astronomy. I mean, the whole course is predicated upon the study of light. Okay, but it's light, right? And that light, we, we usually, we normally think of it, right, as waves, right? I mean, it can be a particle, right, but it's waves, right? We, that's what we think of it, right? So we have a wave of light that has, you know, wavelength. It has a wavelength.
controlled by prey. Wavelength, it's a lambda, lowercase lambda. Yes, lowercase, wavelength, right? What's the speed of that? Remember we did this? Three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. All light travels the same speed, right? So if you have, if you have, can I erase some of this? If you have uh, any kind of light, any kind of light. You have, um, you know, long wavelengths, right? You know, radio waves. You know, shorter wave, like microwave, maybe, right? You know, infrared, shorter wavelengths, right? You know, visible light, right? Ultraviolet, right? Right, maybe uh, X rays, right? And then gamma rays. No. Which one's going to have more energy? Think of the energy as, as a string. Gamma rays? Yeah, the gamma rays, right? So, yeah, if you... It's a great analogy, you know. If, this is obviously going to have more string, right? Right, so more energy, least energy, right? Makes sense? Okay. It's all going at the same speed, right? Right? Right. And what's, what's this called? Going from here to here, what's that called? A wavelength. Good. What else is it called? One wavelength is one, one cycle. Okay. What cycles per second? What's that called? What is it? Publicity? Frequency. 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 No, that's all right. Frequency. Yeah, that's right. Frequency. Okay. Frequency. What is, uh, what's the inverse of frequency? Who said that? Sammy, did you say that? Who said freak? Who said period? You did that, Anna? Yeah. So you can be rotten and nice and intellectual in the same 80 minutes. That's amazing. That's Ona. She's like really. It was quite incredible. You have you show great diversity. I know people are multifaceted. It, they are. They are. They are. Absolutely. Excellent. Well done. Okay. So, yeah. So that's that. That's does that answer your question? I mean, that's all we're talking about, right? Right. I mean. What do you have to know about the atom? Well, nothing really. You just have to know that electrons orbit the atom, and and those. You know, let me ask you a series of four questions. Uh, is an atom really organized? I mean, it's really. Is it really organized? Yes or no? no. I mean, it's so organized, it's incredible. I mean, I can predict it. I mean, <laughs> doesn't gold look the same all over the place? I mean, it's all the same. I mean, doesn't sodium react the same every time? I mean, it's really, <clears throat> an atom is incredibly organized, right? Correct? So if an atom is organized, is its behavior predictable? Yeah, of course it's predictable. So if it's predictable, is the light that's given off going to be the same per transition, right? Of course it is. So if it's the same per transition, no, no, you don't need to do that. You don't need. You don't. You don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. Okay. I. It took 18 years to figure that out, but you don't need to do that. Okay. Good. So, so. If if everything's predictable, would I know how to produce X-rays using ele electronic transitions? Couldn't I produce X-rays? Sure, I can. Yeah. Can I produce red light? Sure. Strontium is very reddish. Lithium is kind of like magenta, you know. Every, every element, you know, copper, very green. Now, I can produce colors using these electron transitions. I can produce visible light. I can produce all kinds of, I can, I, I can produce gamma radiation through nuclear decay. Light. Can you see it? No. Will it cook your body from the inside out thoroughly? Absolutely. It denatures the cell membranes and you turn into a giant blob. Brrr. Yes? No, radio, no. Infrared is, is heat. 
It's heat. Heat gives all, heat is really re infrared light. Uh, infrared light is uh, a radio wave, is a, is a wave that's between microwaves and red in terms of the wavelength. You see the visible, this visible spectrum, I don't know which one I said visible, but it's actually very small. Like if, if, um, if, if microwave looks like this in terms of its span of wavelengths, okay, if it has this span of wavelengths, let's say. I mean, visible light is like this. I mean, it's very, it has a very, very narrow band of wavelengths, very narrow band, very narrow band. It's actually one of the, it's the, one of the, it's the smallest segment of the electromagnetic radiation spectrum. It's, very, it's a very small band of wavelengths, visible light. What, what visible light do we see best? What's, what are we most sensitive to? Violet. No, we're, we don't see violet, really. Red. No. Red. Green, close. Green, yellow. Green, yellow. Green, yellow. Green, yellow. Yeah, green, yellow. Yeah, that's right. Green, yellow. It's right in the book. Green, yellow. You know, the safety um, colors, um, cops, um, people. aid worker, you know, people work in the middle of the road. They wear that, that kind of like chartreuse color. Anybody got chartreuse? No, I haven't judged. I just said chartreuse in the North Main. What is it? I just said chartreuse in the North Main. Oh, I'm, I, 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 I don't want you to intimidate the class. See, I'm trying to pretend you don't know anything because, because people have come up to me and said, you know, you know, Ona, could you shut her down a little bit because she's very intimidating and we're not learning properly. So I, I said, okay, so that's why. All right. So, um, so they're kind of like mint green. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's. We, brilliant. Yeah, you know that tennis ball color? That's chartreuse. That, that our eyes are most sensitive to that. Of all the rays coming from the sun, that's the dominant ray. Believe it or not, it's not green, it's not yellow, it's kind of that pea green, you know. Yeah. All right. So does that answer your question? Pretty good? We're, we kind of ran out of time. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the physics part of it, the mechanics part of it, the Newton's laws, etc. They're, they're not, they're, they're, those questions are not written as if you're a physics person. They're written as if you are a human being and you live on this planet. Uh, I'm not being, well I am being sarcastic, but I'm being more facetious I suppose. But in other words, in other words, um, there are certain aspects of motion. Like if I jump out of an airplane, am I going to accelerate? At 10 meters per second squared, yeah. But am I going to continue until infinity? No, no. The upward force, when that equals my weight, then I have, that's called terminal velocity. I have a velocity, right? If I go up in an elevator, right? I go up in an elevator and I, I feel heavier, right? Yeah. Well, why, why do I feel heavier? Okay, those sorts of things. Why do I feel heavier? And then when I stop accelerating, well, what, what causes acceleration? The, a force, right? A force, yes? So if my upward force, what, what do I measure on a scale? What do I measure on a scale? I measure my weight, right? But I, am I measuring my weight? No, I'm measuring the normal. And I'm saying it's equal, right? Because there's no, I'm not accelerating. I'm at a constant velocity. Zero is constant velocity, okay. So I go, I accelerate upward, I'm increasing the normal, the upward force, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna appear heavier, aren't I, right? But now that I, now that when I start, when I stop accelerating, that means the upward and downward forces are equal. So my weight's normal, right? Now I go down. I reduce that normal force. I free fall, right? So on the space shuttle, they're kind of floating around, but they're, they're not, you know, they're, they, they still have weight, but they don't have the normal force. They still have weight, but they're in free fall. So those sorts of things. It's not that big of a deal. So you certainly can ask me, email me, whatever you want to do. I'll try to answer you. I'll be here. You know, you don't, you don't, have, you don't have the exam tomorrow. I'll be around. You can ask me during the day. You know, the day of the exam. 
you want to come in early, you want to hang out, maybe make a video, whatever. I mean, it's not a big deal because I'm not teaching when I have astronomy, because astronomy is on my odd day. I only teach on my even days with my seventh graders. So all my high school kids are going to be taking exams. See? So, um, so you want to come in a little bit early, find me, and we'll talk a little bit about it. All right? All right? Good luck.